So you've got yourself a new bike and you've fallen in love with cycling. Life is great. But after a few months, you find yourself wanting more and ask the question, should I upgrade to carbon wheels and lightweight tires? And then you ask yourself your next question, how much faster are deep carbon aero wheels and lightweight tires? Well, let's find out. Before we dive into this video, I'm Alex Payton. And I'm Ollie Bridgewood. And you're watching GCN Tech. And if you like the sound of this video, then why not help support the channel by subscribing so that you don't miss future videos like it. Make sure you hit that bell. Right, now we've got that out of the way, we're here in Southern Spain to see how much faster you can go by upgrading your wheel set. In this video, we're using Vision Wheels as an example, as they sponsor the channel and help make videos like this possible. But the information discussed is relevant to other wheel brands too. And this is our upgrade wheel set, the Vision Metron 55 SL, fitted with P0 race tyres, latex inner tubes, and a Dura Ace cassette. A setup like this is what we would typically see people choosing when they're looking to upgrade their wheel set. And this setup will set you back in the region of around £2,000 or $2,750. This complete package is around 500 grams lighter than Ollie's. Now, the examples we have here are the Vision Team 30 wheel set with Pirelli P7 tyres and a Shimano 105 cassette. There's also butyl inner tubes installed in the tyres. Now this setup is representative of the kind of thing that would come as standard on an entry level or a mid-tier sort of spec bike. They're a good solid wheel but they're made of aluminium and they weigh, combined with the tyres and cassette and tubes, 3,050 grams. You'd expect to pay around £500 or $700 for this kind of setup. But just how much difference does upgrading your wheels make to your speed when riding on a climb, but also on the flat? It's time to put it to the test. Our test route is a simple one. It includes a slightly longer, flatter section of road, which is representative of the speeds that most people will ride at. We will then turn onto a longer climb of around 15 to 20 minutes. And for each section, I'm gonna to try to ride a continual effort of around 260 watts. Now this is a power that should be comparable to most cycling enthusiasts of a reasonable fitness level. Some people might be slightly higher, some people may be slightly lower, but it should give us a fair test so that I can then complete the run using our entry level or aluminium wheel set, change my wheel set, go for the upgrade myself, fit the deeper section carbon wheels, and then repeat our experiment. Now, interestingly, the carbon wheel set has a slightly more optimal design in terms of their aerodynamics, which means on this flatter, faster section, we should get the benefit of them being lighter and faster aerodynamically. Now, the aerodynamic difference isn't really gonna make a huge impact when we're climbing at a much slower speed, but that 500 gram weight saving should really come into its own. Right, see how this all goes. Right, test one, I'm about to start that off. I'll press the lap button, I'll then lap it again as I start the climb, and then lap it at the top. And I'll go for the upgrade, and we'll see you in a bit. We're going all the way up to there. God, it does look like a long old way. Woo. Right, that's the flatter section done. Not a particularly long segment, but it took three minutes, 39 seconds. Bang on my average power, 261 watts. So we're gonna work our way across to the base of where I'm gonna start the climb test, and then we'll lap it off again, and I'll settle into that pace. This climb looks absolutely epic. And it's really representative of what lots of people are gonna be heading out and taking on. Right, there we go. Lap that off. Settle into our steady rhythm. Long way to the top from here. Ooh. Now, whilst these wheels might not necessarily be quite as aerodynamic as a set of deep section carbon wheels, I don't really think that matters on a climb such as this because it's the weight difference 
that is going to really have the biggest impact. So I'm intrigued to see what the results will be after we've done this little experiment. Oh, Time yeah. for the best bit now, upgrading. Everyone's favorite bit. <laughs> Get Could those be. bad boys in. Look at these. Okay, I need to change my brake pads. So upgrade wheels are in, and I'm not gonna lie, they certainly feel much, much faster, but I'm not gonna base it on opinion. We're gonna use maths, science, and my little experiment. Perfect. Right, let's do it. Experiment number two, upgraded carbon wheels. Whew. While Alex is doing his runs, allow me to explain some of the differences we're looking at. Now, saving half a kilo on his upgrade wheel set is going to make a difference whenever he's climbing uphill or accelerating. But it's not as big a difference as you might think. So according to maths, on a 10 kilometer climb, it's likely to save around 15 seconds. However, the upgrade wheels are also more aerodynamic, and this will have a significant benefit when riding at speed or on the flat. At 40 kilometers an hour, you could typically expect to save 10 to 20 watts, depending on wind conditions. And and even though the aero benefit is much less when you're going slower uphill, it still is there. The tyres and inner tubes are my favourite upgrade though, because they cost the least, and also the combined rolling resistance saving is likely to be around 20 watts. Just gone in, running through my start location, which is here, to signify I'm on to the climbing segment of our little course now. So I'm going to settle in, hold the steady power, same body position. We're keeping all of the variables as similar and controlled as possible. So I'm gonna ride all the way to top, 260 watts. And even now, at the beginning, it feels like the bike's raring to go. So hopefully, it'll be uh, interesting to see what the results are. Right, less talking, I need to concentrate on holding the correct numbers. Settle in, it's gonna be a long time to go. Right, that, whew, that is the end of our little experiment, all done and dusted. Quiet and down. I was going to say, Ollie sort of had the joke on me making me ride up and down this epic climb, but come on, look at these views. He's missing right out. Anyway, I'll catch my breath, we'll descend back down, we'll catch up with Ollie, and then, obviously, we can discuss the results. See you down there. So, Ollie, experiment's done. Thanks very much for the coffee. I suppose I should probably run you through the results, shall I? Do it. So first up, on the flatter section that we were testing on, and the time I did for the aluminium wheels, we have got uh, 3 minutes 39 seconds with an average power of 259 watts. So then with the carbon upgraded wheels and tyres, we've got 3 minutes 26 seconds, again, 259 watts. So that is a, what, 13 second saving? That's a lot, especially when you consider it's just a relatively short segment. If you were to extrapolate that over a 40 kilometre ride, that's going to be, you know, approaching two minutes, isn't it? That is a significant savings we had. So I think coming into play here is mostly the rolling resistance reduction from the tyres and also the aerodynamic benefit of the deeper section carbon wheels. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. What about on the climb? So on the climb, first run up aluminium wheels, we've got 13 minutes, 55 seconds. Average power, 261 watts. Pretty happy with my pace in there. Good pacing. Thanks. And then the upgraded wheel set is 13 minutes, 19 seconds, 260 watts. So one watt less, actually. And 36 seconds saved yeah. on, on the climb. That's a significant amount, isn't it? That's a huge amount. But I've, I do want to maintain that we, we know from maths and other experiments that that big saving in time is not down to that half a kilo weight. 
it will likely be in the region of around you know three to five seconds saved from the weight but most of that saving is going to have come from the rolling resistance of your tyres and your and your inner tubes, so you've got latex tubes in. And of course, on the climb at the lower speeds, aerodynamics not really coming into play, is it? So we'll come in slightly. Yeah. But the biggest saving is going to be the rolling resistance. And the best thing about that, as we mentioned earlier, is that that is the most cost-effective part of your upgrade package. Well, there you go. If you are considering upgrading your wheels and your tyres, well, I'd suggest going for it. And if you're looking for a slightly more budget-friendly option. You could maybe just look at your new tyres and lightweight inner tubes. Yeah, and just think how much that, those savings would add up over the course of like a century ride. It'd yeah. be massive, a massive amount of difference. Yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to GCN Tech. Let us know your thoughts on the video in the comments section down below. Love you. Bye. <laughs>